Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Aloha, and welcome back to another episode of Talk Story with John Wahei. We've got a really important show for everyone in Hawaii, and it involves the Office of Hawaiian Affairs. I should make that plain from the beginning, and it is about the, the news regarding the, uh, there was an audit that the state conducted on OHA. And today I thought that we needed to maybe balance some of the, uh, dare I say it, fake news that's been coming out about this issue. Uh, there seems to be a lot of noise about it, but very little facts. And so I thought we ought to take, the mo take a moment today on Talk Story to, with John Wahe to do some serious to have a serious conversation about this issue. So I want to thank my special guest this afternoon, Mr. Kamanao Pono Crab, who is the uh, leader, the CEO of the Office of Hawaiian Affairs. <laughs> and I think that's uh, Kapohana. Uh, Kapohana, correct. Kapohana, yeah. which is, uh, he, by the way, this is a little aside, but I noticed that other Hawaiian uh, institutions, trusts, and so forth, are starting to use the Hawaiian That's correct. words for the various uh, positions. And, and you actually started all of that, yes. didn't you? Yes, in 2012, uh, you, you know, when I was um, elected by the board, uh, you know, one of the changes at that time was to move towards a more cultural Hawaiian value-based institution. And so, that was my proposal. That was one of your uh, one of your things that you brought to the you proposed to the That's board. correct. That's so correct. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure, you know, sure. Uh, sure. Before we go any further, sure. which is real Hawaiian, by yeah, the way, yeah. we want to know who you are. Right. Well, first of all, thank you, Governor, for for um, asking me to as an invited guest to share. Um, I actually was born and raised in Mo'ili'ili. I'm wow. the uh, second youngest of seven, um, and my actually my my grandmother my maternal grandmother Hanai my four older cousins so I have a kind of an extended ohana. no wonder no wonder I run when I run into people they say you they know your brother or they know your <laughs> sister. sister you got right. a whole uh, right. a whole line <laughs> a whole line of, of crab uh, siblings uh, born and raised in Moili um, my my family uh, I would say were my parents are very staunch um, Hawaiian. Um, and traditional in terms of values, they really, really supported Hawaiian culture and were very, um, I would say, very knowledgeable, not just of Hawaiian history, but of Hawaiian issues. Right. So my father is a retired fire captain, long-term, long-time uh, Democrat. Um, he used to run our neighborhood um, elections <laughs> poll. Uh, my, my mom uh, retired from United Airlines in cabin service, so I would say very humble family. Uh, and where, where, where did you go to school? Uh, I graduated from Kamehameha Schools. Oh, too, um, okay. And then after that, uh, I, at that time, they, they, were, they weren't so um, college bound. And so uh, Kamehameha Schools was known for ROTC. Uh, so they were known for training people to get jobs that actually paid well. That's right. <laughs> right. <laughs> we are in a different era. We're in a different <laughs> era now. It's certainly right. some changes. So you, you, you went to university. I noticed there's a, yes. that there you have a doctorate. That's and, correct. Uh, I, I, I traveled throughout the, in my, in my late teens, early, early 20s, traveled throughout the, the U.S. Uh, doing my military service and then as a young man, Came home, uh, went back to um, Kapilani Community College, the university. Then I got my bachelor's, my master's, and my my doctorate in clinical psychology from the University of Hawaii Department of Psychology. There. Oh, terrific! Right. And yeah. uh, how long have you been uh, in the CEO of, of OHA? Uh, I I've been the CEO of the Pohana from 2012 to current 2018. So just six about six well, about years. six years yeah. right now. I I actually. Um, Came to OI in 2010. I was practicing out in Waianae Coast Comprehensive Health Center with uh, Hawaiian families. 
uh, and providing individual services services there as a licensed clinical psychologist. But I actually was recruited recruited to be the the research director from 2010 to 2012. Research director at the Office of Hawaiian, Hawaiian Affairs. Affairs. Correct. Okay, so you, you've had a somewhat extensive background working in the Hawaiian community yes, and yes, as I well have. as being educated to yes. deal with some of these, uh, the, some of the issues. In correct, the correct, I would agree. Now, the topic of today's uh, discussion is an audit, a recent audit that was done by this, the state of Hawaii, I guess the legislative auditor. Correct. And I, well, first of all, we ought to Tell, let people know that the legislative auditor is not uh, an auditor in the traditional sense. I mean, he's not an accountant. What they no. do is... Right. It, it, it's, uh, so every four years, uh, because the, the, the understanding is that, you know, state agencies, departments, um, uh, under the, the state government uh, receive what is called a performance audit every four years. So the, a performance audit means that the auditor actually looks at what you're doing and then uses his or her judgment I would as agree. to whether you're doing anything right. that they might disagree with. Right. I, I, first of all, I think that's a, a great clarification because performance is uh, to the degree in which an organization or institution is complying with certain policies, procedures, and how either effective or efficient those programs are, which is very different from what we typically know as an accounting audit, which is much more of an accounting of those specific financial And whether procedures. you follow the rules exactly. and so forth that right. are in existence at That's that, correct. that time. Right. So the first thing is that the audit that is the topic of this discussion was, I guess, something that's called a performance audit. Performance audit. Which correct. is the legislative auditor looking and seeing if he agrees with some right. your, uh, carrying out your, your, your mission. That's correct. Now, I wanted to ask you, um, who authorized that audit? Well, it, it, it's authorized by the, the state. The, the state legislature? state legislature. Well, is this a regular thing that every four years this Every happens? four years. And so in the past, uh, for a number of years, OHA has complied. And I think uh, part of that is, again, you know, trying to clarify OHA's distinction as a Hawaii public uh, a state trust. Right. Versus, you know, a, a state agency. Yeah, you know, I, I, I having spent a little bit of my life uh, in at the creation of OHA. That's correct. You were from I, the beginning. Uh, you know, I, I find that uh, discussion somewhat uh, tilted in the sense that OHA was always uh, looked upon, at least in, the, in, its, in its origin, as a Hawaiian agency, as a, really as the fourth branch of, of, of government. government, that's correct. As opposed to being an uh, an agency under the governor, correct. You know, under the governor and the executive correct. branch. Have you been able to maintain that kind of separation? Or you? Well, as the fourth branch of government distinct and separate from underneath the executive branch, which is the governor, is, is the Office of Hawaiian Affairs through the state constitution, Hawaii Revised Statutes, Chapter 10. We have what we call semi-autonomous powers. Right. And it's really up to the board and the organization to assert those powers. And then and, and, and this is set up for you actually in the law and in That's the correct. constitution. That is correct. Now, I, I, um, I, I want to also be really clear that we are not taught that the fact that you may be like a fourth branch or not in the executive branch, that you still have a fiduciary duty mm -hmm. to Native Hawaiians. I mean, your that's mission, a, in a sense, gets even more important. Right. And, 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 and that's, that's outlined or mandated in Chapter 10. So we, 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 we must uh, comply as much as possible. But in our, in our mission, it clearly states that the, the assets, the resources, the funding goes not only to improve the conditions for Native Hawaiians, but really is to perpetuate, protect uh, Native Hawaiian rights, to preserve, uh, to continue Native Hawaiian culture and history uh, for Native Hawaiian people. And uh, we have an enormous mandate because 
um, being a fourth branch of government, we, we're kind of like a micro government for Hawaiians right. in terms of economic, health, education, culture. Well, at least rights. you're going to be the advocate for correct. Hawaiians in the executive branch and yes. in the legislative branch. That's and correct. so <clears throat> that's, that's part of your mission. Now, let me ask you a question. Was this audit on f funds that were only funds that were, re that were um, from the general fund that the legislature gave you, or did they look at your operations? I mean, right. uh, what was it on? I mean, right. why? What, what's the connection between right. the legislature and this audit? Right. So to, to, to provide some, maybe some context is a majority of OHA's funding comes from what we call it the Native Hawaiian Trust. And that, right. that's, that's a separate funding that the OHA the Office of Hawaiian Affairs over years uh, through settlements with the state, we have our own fund. Right. And so we have spending policies that draw down from that fund in addition to an annual um, payment from the state with 15.1. So, so, the, so the, the, the existing funds that you have are not, are not part of the, you don't go to the legislature to ask them for anything. That's yeah? correct, we don't. We so, don't. And then the Legislature, in addition, gives you 15.1. Now, that 15.1, so people understand, 15.1 million is a substitute, really, for what the Constitution mandates, which is 20% of all ceded land revenues. That is correct. Now, my understanding, a uh, little bit that I have done on this, is that 15.1 would be like a third of what 20% of uh, ceded land revenues right. are. Right. Uh, based on the research we did with a financial review in 2012 and 2016, uh, it, based on that analysis, we would agree and concur that 15.1 does not measure up to the total 20% of the public land trust revenues. Now, as a delegate to the 78 Constitutional Convention, someone who was dealing with the issue of ceded land revenues and Native Hawaiians and everything, it was the, at least the constitutional delegate's position and intention that, that those ceded lands revenues, that 20% revenue, were, was not was separated from the general fund. That is correct. I, I mean, if you ask people who uh, who were there, and I guess even today, the, 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 the intention was that these were funds that actually belonged to Native Hawaiians. Right, right. So this is not something that you're supposed to be processing. Right, right. And, 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 and I think it should be you know, stated that you know, it's a result of the Admissions Act, it, it, it's the Constitution, it is the state's obligation through the public land trusts to use a certain amount of funds specifically to help improve the conditions for Native Hawaiians. And I think for people out there, they should know uh, uh, that when we talk about ceded lands and the ceded lands monies and trusts, we're talking about lands that will actually belong to uh, uh, the Native Hawaiian government That's that correct. was illegally the overthrown. overthrown. Right. And so when the United States returned these lands back to the uh, people of Hawaii, Hawaii, or the government of Hawaii at that time, territorial government, there was a mandate mm -hmm. that the fact that these lands originated as Native lands, uh, that the, uh, the mandate would be a recognition of that by saying at least uh, uh, one one of the five purposes right. would be for the betterment of right. Native Hawaiian. And, and so, it's proportionate too. So, you know, that 20% that figure was over time. And so uh, I, I would agree is that there's there's a legal basis, historical pay, basis. Well, it seems like there's funds. also a moral basis. And a moral basis. Uh, yeah, for, for this to, to happen. And uh, when we, we're going to take a small break right now. And when we come back, I want to discuss with you or talk to you about what the audit ostensibly sure. found. We love and, and 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 how uh, we are dealing with it. So, sure. folks, stick around. We got a great show for you. You are not going to get this on the usual news media. So, mm -hmm. watch this show, and we'll be right back. 
Hello, I'm Dave Stevens, host of the Cyber Underground. This is where we discuss everything that relates to computers that's just going to scare you out of your mind. So come join us every week here on thinktechhawaii.com, 1 p.m. on Friday afternoons. And then you can go see all our episodes on YouTube. Just look up the Cyber Underground on YouTube. All our shows will show up. And please follow us. We're always giving you current, relevant information to protect you, keeping you safe. Aloha. I'm going to the game and it's gonna be great. Early arriving for a little tailgate. I usually drink but won't be drinking today cause I'm the designated driver and that's okay. It's nice to be the guy that keeps his friends in line. Keeps them from drinking too much so we can have a great time. A little responsibility can go a long way cause it's all about having fun on game day. I'm the guy you wanna be. I'm the guy saving money. I'm the guy with the H2O and I'm the guy that says let's go. Welcome back to Talk Story with John Waihe'e. By the way, folks, if you've got a question, this is the number to our hotline, 808-374-2014. There's a way to Twitter in, but you've got to be younger than me to tell you how to do that. So, Oh, there, it's under, it's under my, you can see it right here. Oh, okay. This is how you tweet a question in. Meanwhile, for those of us that are a little bit uh, from a different generation, 808-374-2014. Okay, so there's been a recent audit. There's been a recent uh, audit. Uh, tell, what did the off, uh, audit cover? I mean, what, what does it tell you? And sure. It, it, so the, the, the current audit uh, it spans specific years from, you know, 2013. Uh, Until about 2017, 16, about three, four years. And, and what did they, what did they look right. at? The entire organization, all the funds, right. or well, they they looked at three three areas. Is one was fiscal reserve spending. Okay. Um, now uh, we ought to say something. So one was fiscal reserve for spending. When you say reserve spending, you are dealing with the funds that you have set aside for investment and for future, right. uh, I guess, corpus. You right, right. Keep so that, that is a distinction. So the fiscal reserve funds really come out of the Native Hawaiian Trust Fund. So that is, that, that, that is not money that uh, is taxpayer money or general fund money from this the state. This is money that you have invested That's and correct. earned uh, income yeah. off of, as well as money that were due, were due you because of state... Uh, State, you know, state wrongs. Right, that, that is correct. As a result of past settlements over the past years from the 90s to the 2000s, there, there, there was uh, uh, that understanding is that the, the proper use of the public land trust would have to go to Native Hawaiians and Office of Hawaiian Affairs established to the Constitutional Convention in 1978. Is, is that receptacle? So these are funds that you're totally responsible for. We are so totally responsible. Those are uh, these reserve funds is one category. What's the right. next? The other one is CEO sponsorships. Again, okay. those come out of our, our own funds. Nothing having to, nothing, nothing having to do with general funds or taxpayer funds, and then trustee funds. Okay, so they, they, they so that's the third one would be trustee. That is fund. correct. So these are funds that the trustees have discretion over. That's correct. All right. right. So ostensibly, you know, uh, and I, I'm going to ask you this question: um, in, in, uh, What did the audit ostensibly find? And tell me what uh, your response to it might be. Sure. So there there are a number of findings. Uh, the one was. Very clear is that there should be greater uh, clarification and improvement of our policy. Sometimes they felt it was too broad for interpretation, and so we would have to uh, improve on uh, our policies. Um, That's your policy on how to use the reserve funds, reserve funds, trustee funds, funds and, and your discretion. CO, yes, yes. Now. <laughs> Uh, and none of these funds come from the, the state. state. Right, okay. that's correct. So actually... But, uh, you know, I guess you would be, and anybody would be, happy to see if somebody's got a better mousetrap. I don't right, think that's right, the issue. Right, right, right. right. And I, I, I think we've always been transparent about complying and being transparent and accountable. Uh, when you look at our total budget, 
we do receive general funds, and the general funds really are for some of our programs, like the Native Hawaiian Legal Corporation. So we match funds ah. with the state and OHA's money. So let me get this real clear so the people out there can understand this. What happens is the general funds, a lot of it anyway, that right. comes in that is appropriated uh, by the legislature as an appropriate, and this is not part of the 15.1. That, that is not. The 15.1 is, is the fake 20%. That's correct. Right. And so this fund, this, uh, these funds are set aside mainly for uh, other programs that you match. That is correct. That is correct. Okay, so we none also, of that was this discussion. None of, none of that was part of the discussion, and we thought it was very important to clarify. So, uh, for example, we also use funds for a fund to help out homelessness in, for Native Hawaiian communities. So we provide a statewide grant that specifically goes to helping aid for homeless, prevent people from going, from moving into homelessness. And again, we match our funds with the state funds for the general fund. You know what the impression I had when I, the little bit, and I must confess that uh, I actually I wanted to talk to you and before I actually really went through the thing mm -hmm. in depth, but, uh, and so today was uh, the, the chance. But what I little I saw about it is that, uh, it, the recommendations that have to do with better, you know, procedure and stuff, that, that's not a problem. But it seemed like the auditor was starting to judge content. Yes, yes. Uh, I, I, Am I correct with I, that? Well, we would concur. I think there's, there's a subjective perception that they felt maybe um, was put out in the audit that was sensationalized or what we believe was overly embellished. Well, let's get yeah. some numbers. My right. understanding is that there was, uh, well, first of all, my understanding of how the anytime reserve funds are used, my understanding is that it takes an extraordinary vote of the trustees to do that. that. Is this correct. is not a simple majority uh, policy. Change. No, not at all, not at all. So, so any funding or request for funding through the fiscal reserve goes through a vetting process by our staff in uh, accounting, and sometimes it comes from different um, programs uh, and lines of business throughout the organization. But we, we go through a, a vetting process, we put it in an action item, and it, it has to go to the, the RM committee for one vote and then to the full board. So, so all this, trustees are involved. And they're all involved. And it, but, you know, normally it takes, I guess, for an appropriation, it takes out of nine trustees, you need five votes. But right. for this, you need six. six. You, need, you need a greater majority. That is, that is correct. And, and, and you really can't remove these funds without the participation of the trustees. You, you cannot. You cannot. If, if any uh, approval... It, it must be of, of a majority of six votes for the board to approve. All right, so now I, I am, the, trust, the, the, the audit seemed to have talked about $14 million. $14 so million. Out of all the millions and all the, uh, the, the funds that you are uh, you're responsible for, the focus of this sensational uh, audit was the was $14 million. $14 million. Now, my understanding that out of that $14 million, almost $10 million, or $10 million of it, went to state agencies? Went to state agencies. So, for example, uh, we have uh, a historical agreement between the Office of Hawaiian Affairs and Department of Hawaiian Homeland. So we provide an annual allotment uh, of $3 million per year to help with their debt consolidation loans, which allows it to provide infrastructure, project planning, so that they can put homes on the land for Native Hawaiian beneficiaries 50% or greater. So this is like, you know, they give you 15 million, you give them 10 million back, that, you know? Yeah, I would agree. I mean, uh, that's what this, and that's what this is talking about. That is So correct. to the extent that anybody got money that shouldn't have gotten money, it was the state. It was the state. And it all went to benefit Native Hawaiian. Oh, right. And then, and then there was about another four million left. But I understand that at least uh, most of it, 13 plus million, was uh, actually the result of trustee action. That is correct. That is correct. We funded about 22 initiatives. Uh, Department of Hawaiian Homeland is one. The Lunalilo Trust for Elderly Care for Native Hawaiian Kupuna was another. It went to uh, to fund um, 
Chartered schools, Native Hawaiian chartered schools. So did schools? any of that money go to somebody's favorite uh, contractor that no, was going to get a non-bid contract? No, not like at all. The, these are purely, um, some of them we, 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 we fund annually, like right. Hawaiian homelands, chartered schools. Others were based on need, based on the demand uh, to either help organizations sustain their operations or looking at the how they provide services to the Native Hawaiian community. So, okay, this is a very important point, and, and I really want to, first of all, no, all the money all that the was money. the subject of this uh, audit. so-called audit went to Native Hawaiian beneficiaries. That is correct. So nobody, you know, did something. Right, there was, yeah, no one got a, a favoritism for a particular concert. All of it went back to reinvest uh, in, in our people, build greater capacity in our community. And the judgment as to who should get the money was done by yourself and the trustees. Yes. And who actually are entrusted with that, uh, with that requirement. Right, I mean. that responsibility, yes. So what may be happening here, and, and this is what struck me, and why we actually, the, my motivation the, yeah. for, for having this uh, discussion today is, what makes the legislative, I'm not talking about, you know, you ought to have a little bit more paper or a little bit more, oh, of course, right. you know, yeah. whatever you need to do to make, but what makes the legislative auditor a non-elected, non-Native Hawaiian mm -hmm. uh, expert, expert judgment better than your judgment or, uh, or, or the trustee's judgment? You know, well, I, and I think uh, to even put it into further context, six percent, which is the general funds, which approximately is about three to four million dollars, it's only six percent of our total budget. The remaining ninety-four percent is all from the Native Hawaiian Trust Fund. And, and you guys, one of the reasons why we have the Office of Hawaiian Affairs is that the regular uh, civil servant types. Or well, the regular weren't doing a good job to start with, right. and the right. idea was to get. Now there has been people saying one of the, the items, real quick, was the idea that maybe you didn't listen to your staff. Now I know when I was governor, if I listened to the staff all the right. time, they wouldn't need me as governor, <laughs> right? Yes, yes, so yes. I mean, was it is it unusual for the CEO to say, no, I think in this case the beneficiary may right. be right, and you right. guys right. may be just a right. bunch of auditors. Right. So you're you're, you're 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 correct. Is we go through a vetting process, but as a result of a, a we have a delegation of authority, dele delegation of authority from the board to me. And then even from me down to directors, managers. But so you are still the responsible. I'm total. Person. I'm I, when the buck stops here, I'm the one fully responsible for all of the. Well, the I money. have somebody in the next room telling me that our time is up. Oh, shucks. And uh, I know. I hope that uh, folks. I hope that this would at least enlighten you to the other side of the story. So. I'd like to again thank uh, Kamanao. Thank you. Aloha. Thank you so much for coming. Aloha. I'll see all of you in uh, two weeks. Aloha. Aloha.